Today's lesson is on trapezoids and kites. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. The parallel sides of the trapezoid are called bases. The non-parallel sides are called legs. The two angles that share a base of a trapezoid are called base angles. Each trapezoid has two pairs of base angles. An isosceles trapezoid has legs that are congruent. Theorem 619 says that if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of base angles is congruent. So angle T is congruent to angle P, and angle R is congruent to angle A. In example one, we will find angle measures in trapezoids. Quadrilateral CDEF is an isosceles trapezoid, and the measure of angle C is 65. What are the measures of angles D, angle E, and angle F? Since the trapezoid is an isosceles trapezoid, we know the base angles are congruent. So angle C is congruent to angle F, and angle E is congruent to angle D. We know that the base angles, angles C and angle F, are congruent. So the measure of angle F is going to be 65. Since angles D and E are the other pair of base angles, they are also congruent. And because angle C and angle D are same side interior angles between parallel lines, we know that they are supplementary. So 65 plus the measure of angle D equals 180. Subtract 65 from both sides. And the measure of angle D is 115. Since the measure of angle D and the measure of angle E are congruent, both have the measure of 115. Pause the video and do you try number one. Notice that the trapezoid has been rotated. Quadrilateral PQRS is an isosceles trapezoid and the measure of angle R is 106. What are the measure of angle P, the measure of angle Q, and the measure of angle S? Since segment QP is parallel to segment RS, those are the bases of our trapezoid, which means our base angles are congruent. Angle R is congruent to angle S, and angle Q is congruent to angle P. Since angle Q and angle R are same set interior angles, they are supplementary. So the measure of angle Q plus the measure of angle R equals 180. Subtract 106 from both sides, and the measure of angle Q equals 74. Since angle Q is congruent to angle P, the measures of angle Q and P are both 74. In example two, we will find angle measures in isosceles trapezoids. The second ring of the fan consists of 20 congruent isosceles trapezoids that appear to form a circle. What are the measures of the base angles of these trapezoids? Since this is an isosceles trapezoid, we know that the bases are parallel to one another. Since these two lines, or these line segments are parallel, we know that this angle and this angle are congruent because they're corresponding angles. Since this is an isosceles trapezoid, the base angles are congruent. So again, this angle will be congruent to this one, and up here, this angle is congruent to this because of your parallel lines and your corresponding angles. We can find the value of x by first finding this vertex angle then using our triangle angle sum theorem to find x. We know that there are 20 triangles here that create a circle. So to find the measure of angle 1, we will take 360 degrees and divide it by the number of triangles 20. That will give us 18 degrees for angle 1's measure. Since angle 1 and x and x form a triangle, we know that we have 18 plus x plus x will equal 180. So 18 plus 2x will equal 180. Subtract 18 from both sides, and 2x will equal 162. Divide both sides by 2, and x equals 81. Since this angle and this angle are same side interior angles, the measure of this angle, x, plus y will equal 180. So 81 plus y equals 180. Subtract 81 from both sides, and y equals 99. 
Pause the video and do you try number two. A fan like this one has 15 angles meeting at the center. What are the measures of the base angles of the trapezoid in the second ring? Let's start by redrawing the triangle and finding the measure of angle one. Since there are 15 circles, or 16 triangles that form a circle, we know that 360 degrees divided by 15 will give us the measure of angle one. So the measure of angle one is 24. Since the bases of the trapezoid are parallel, we know this angle and this angle are congruent. And since the base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent, we know this is congruent to this one, which is also congruent to this. So let's find the value of x by using our triangle angle sum theorem. So 24 plus 2x will equal 180. Subtract 24 from both sides, and 2x equals 156. Divide both sides by 2, and x equals 78. To find y, we know that x and y are supplementary. So x plus y equals 180. Substitute 78 for x. 78 plus y equals 180. Subtract 78 from both sides, and y equals 102. In theorem 6-20, if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then its diagonals are congruent. So segment AC is congruent to segment BD because trapezoid ABCD is an isosceles trapezoid. The mid-segment of a trapezoid is a segment that joins the midpoints of the trapezoid's legs. The mid-segment of a trapezoid has two unique properties. First, the mid-segment is parallel to both of the bases. Second, the length of the mid-segment is half of the sum of the bases. I like to multiply instead of divide, so I like to use the equation 2 times the length of the mid-segment, mn, will equal the sum of the bases, segment RA and segment TP. In example 3, we will use the mid-segment of the trapezoid. Segment QR is the mid-segment of trapezoid LMNP. What is the value of X and what is the length of segment QR? Since segment QR is the mid-segment, we know it takes two mid-segments to equal the sum of the bases. So let's start with that a geometry equation. Substitute the expressions in for the lengths of the segments, then use distributive property on the left-hand side, and combine like terms on the right. Subtract 2x from both sides, and add 2 to both sides. So 6 will equal 2x. Divide both sides by 2, and 3 equals x. Let's check by substituting 3 in for x. So 3 times 4 is 12, minus 10 is 2. 3 plus 2 is 5, and the length of segment PN is 8. So to answer the second question, what is the length of segment QR, we know that is 5. Now if we really want to check, we know that 5 times 2, so 2 mid-segments, will equal the sum of the bases, 2 plus 8. Since 10 equals 10, we know we're correct. Pause the video and do you try number 3. Segment MN is the mid-segment of trapezoid PQRS. What is the value of X and what is the length of segment MN? Let's start by writing our geometry equation that says two mid-segments equals the sum of the bases. Next, we'll substitute in the length of the segments, use distributive property on the left, and combine like terms on the right. Now subtract 4x from both sides and add 2 to both sides. So 24 will equal 4x. Divide both sides by 4 and 6 equals x. Go ahead and substitute 6 in for x for the length of segment mn. So 6 times 2 is 12, plus 11 is 23. And to check, let's substitute 6 in for the length of segment ps. 8 times 6 is 48, minus 12 is 36. To do our real check, let's take 2 times the length of the mid-segment, 23, and that should equal the sum of the bases, 10 plus 36. Since 2 times 23 is 46, and 10 plus 36 is 46, we know we're correct. A kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, 
and no opposite sides congruent. So notice that side AB is congruent to side AD. Those are consecutive sides. Side BC is congruent to side DC, and those are consecutive sides. The diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. So segment AC is perpendicular to segment BD. Notice that by side, 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 because here we have reflexive property, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. Since the triangles are congruent, their corresponding angles are also congruent. So angle BAC is congruent to angle DAC, and angle BCA uh, is congruent to angle DCA. In example four, we will find angle measures in kites. Quadrilateral DEFG is a kite. What are the measures of angles one, two, and three? Let's start with the fact that the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. So the measure of angle one is 90. We can find the measure of angle two by using the triangle angle sum theorem. 90 degrees plus 52 degrees plus angle two's measure will equal 180. So 142 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180. Subtract 142 from both sides, and the measure of angle 2 equals 38. Since diagonal DF creates two congruent triangles, it's going to bisect this angle. So since this angle is 52, the measure of angle 3 will also be 52. Pause the video and do you try number 4. Quadrilateral KLMN is a kite. What are the measures of angles 1, 2, and 3? Again, the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular, so the measure of angle 1 is 90. Since diagonal KM bisects these angles, we know that the measure of angle 3 is 36 degrees as well. To find the measure of angle 2, we'll use the triangle angle sum theorem, 90 degrees, plus 36 degrees plus the measure of angle 2 will equal 180. 126 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180. Subtract 126 from both sides, and the measure of angle 2 equals 54. Take a look at the relationships among quadrilaterals. Kites, trapezoids, and parallelograms are all quadrilaterals. Rectangles and rhombuses are special types of parallelograms, and squares are both rectangles and rhombuses. Remember, kites have no pairs of opposite sides that are parallel or congruent. It's the consecutive sides that are congruent. Trapezoids have one pair of opposite sides that are parallel, and parallelograms have two pairs of opposite sides that are both parallel and congruent. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions regarding the lesson check, be sure to ask me in class. Now take another minute to reread the learning goal on the scale. See if you've climbed any higher on the scale since we began the lesson.